Okay, well, we'll get started now. So uh, it's really a, a great pleasure to have Jane Buckner join us. Uh, we've known each other for a long time and um, have had some uh, some uh, collaborations in the past, but Jane is really, and, and, and currently in a, a BMS study, uh, the early AMPLE study, but Jane is really an incredible uh, researcher and a great person and has really risen through the ranks to become really a national, international leader in the field of rheumatology and in particular uh, mechanisms of, of the adaptive immune response and how that impacts human autoimmunity. So um, Jane went to Johns Hopkins Medical School. She did a residency training at University of Minnesota and did her fellowship at University of Washington and uh, worked with Jerry Nepom there. Um, she was very successful in her training and has really done remarkable work um, in this field and, and became the, it's been at the Benaroya Research Institute since 1999, became director of translational research there in 2005, associate director in 2012, and was appointed president in January of 2016. Um, she does still see patients at Virginia Mason, and she does have an appointment at the University of Washington. And as I mentioned, she's really done pivotal work on um, the adaptive immune response um, and how HLA and T cells influence those diseases such as type 1 diabetes, MS, RA, lupus, relapsing polychondritis. And she's been very well funded and had a, a huge number of honors. And it's really a great pleasure to have Jane today uh, to talk to us about HLA as a window into the pathogenesis of RA. So Jane, I also want to thank you for uh, starting this talk at now 5.06 a.m. Pacific time. So thank you very much. And we look forward to your uh, talk. Thanks, Lou. And uh, it's a pleasure. I wish I was actually there so I could see all of you and meet all of you. It's it's uh, always a, a pleasure to talk to other rheumatologists, especially since much of my career has been spent talking to people who study type 1 diabetes. But today I'm going to talk about our work in RA. And so I, I wanted to have a full declaration of my interests. I'm partnering this with a, a photo from the Pacific Northwest, just to tell you guys, this is an awesome place to live, even though it's raining right now. Some of the questions that I started really early as a fellow in my career is, is trying to understand why there's this really strong association with the shared epitope. And I'll talk about that, the HLA class two alleles that we call the shared epitope. And, and my question was, does it give us a, a clue to how tolerance is broken in rheumatoid arthritis and actually other diseases? And we've been asking what self-antigens are targeted in rheumatoid arthritis, and we think HLA can help inform us about that. Then asking very specific questions, uh, once we know those self-antigens about why tolerance is lost, could it be that there are mimics, uh, foreign antigens that are mimic these self-antigens? Are there new antigens formed? Um, is there a failure of central tolerance? Or is there something about the shared epitope that drives a more pro-inflammatory pro milieu in rheumatoid arthritis? Learning that's important, but you know, why do we really care? And, and what we'd like to be able to do ultimately is predict and prevent this loss of tolerance in rheumatoid arthritis so we don't have a job anymore as rheumatologists. And then uh, you know, I'm very interested in the question whether we could reestablish tolerance. So today, what I thought I'd uh, just give you an overview of what I'm going to talk about, overview of HLA and rheumatoid arthritis. HLA as a guide to identifying T-cell epitopes and how we've done that at the Benaroy Research Institute. Look at this intersection between T and B-cell epitopes in rheumatoid arthritis and if that gives us a clue. And then looking beyond HLA um, and T-cell specificity and what the shared epitope starting to show us there. And then I'm just going to give you a snippet about some of the implications therapeutically. 